Go upstairs. <laughs> hey, we're already recording. I don't care. I need evidence. <laughs> she said they was going to get my kid a Wolverine jersey. Michigan Wolverine jersey. <laughs> I've never seen this guy angry. <laughs> Have we officially started yet? Yeah, we have. Oh, okay. Have. <laughs> Episode twenty-four of Walking in the Truth. Little. Uh, we had a little glitch there. There was a, there was an obnoxious <laughs> team from up north mentioned. Yeah, we we can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> For all you non Ohio State fans, you might not know, and I won't say, but it's true. The team up north. Yeah, T T U N. Yeah. That's all they get. Yeah, yeah. I I know when um we was working down at the racetrack last week. And, of course, I am the only Ohio State fan in our church, I think. And, which I don't understand why they hate them. Because it's not like WVU and Ohio State's rivals. Now, if I wasn't a Christian, I would say probably they're jealous. Well, yeah, could be. But I'm a Christian, so I'm not going to say how jealous they are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but there was a guy that came out, and he works the track down there. Mm-hmm. And he talked about how he lived in Columbus. I was like, well, I live in, used to live in Columbus. I said, it's where I went to school. He's like, Buckeye? And I said, yes, sir. And he went, oh, H. And I was like, I owe. And he went fist bump me. And I could hear them talking behind my back about these Ohio State fans. I actually had one guy talk, tell me one time. I said, yeah, it takes two people to spell Ohio. I was like, that's all right. At least we can keep a coach. It takes two of us to add up the score, too. That's right. We need more than uh, our ten fingers and our ten toes. We need a little bit more than that. But that's all right. We have really stood off the edge here today. <laughs> yeah. We could just blame your wife. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. Got, uh, me, got me all frazzled. Mentioned frazzled me, right as she flicked the camera. Mentioned T-T-U-N. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I tell you what. You take you take a couple of weeks off and go to Belize and then you'll cool off. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> cool well, off in 120 degree temperatures. Yeah, I was going to say in 120 degree temperatures. <laughs> but uh, we're looking forward to that and... Uh, well, I, when this airs, we'll be back. Yeah. So, but... Um, so what episode are we on? 24. 24. Okay. 24. I thought that's what, what it was. Yeah, because yesterday you were the goat. Yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael, Michael that's Lentz. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and now he threw me today. He's got a blue shirt on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not normally... I mean, he's trying to copy my uniform. Well, they But say, I don't have any writing on it, so... But didn't they say that uh, that's the form of, biggest form of flattery? Okay. I try to be like you. Okay. All right. I, I, I can receive that, but I don't know why. But. Well, I'm just happy because, you know, I bought this a year ago and I haven't been able to wear it until now. And um, Breaking out the new threads. I am. I'm getting new clothes tomorrow, too. We're going back to our hometown tomorrow. Amen. Well, it'll be already be done, but I'm, I'm not used to this future episode yeah. stuff. Yeah, we're actually in the future. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, but obviously we'll give updates on the trip later. Yeah. And, um, but you got some, gave me some great news. Just a I while did. Ago. It was interesting. Uh, I, I've got three of my grandkids, two, two boys. Uh, let's see. One is almost nine. No, he is nine. And the other one's almost eight. And, uh, my, my granddaughter, who's four. And, um, last Sunday in church, they were all, of course, up front with me while during praise and worship. And I, I was just praying in, in, in tongues, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, we're full gospel, Pentecostal. And I was praying in tongues. And my granddaughter looked up at me and she's like, Grandpa, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And I, I explained to her. I said, well, I'm praying in the Spirit. And I gave her some scripture and, you know, in that little short interchange. And um, after the service, they all came to me at lunchtime and they said, uh, we, we, we want that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, okay, well, we need to talk this week. And I said, I, I need to we, there's something you have to do first, right? Because I did. I don't. I don't know. You know. I mean, they're my grandkids, but my 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 son and daughter-in-law are believers. So you don't know what parents right. tell their kids. And I know that when we take them back, my wife has to take them back this on Sunday. On Monday, they go to vacation Bible school. Oh, okay. So you you don't always know what you know what they're exposed to, mm-hmm. and you know how, if they've already come to that place where they're old enough to understand. Sure. And their heart's been touched. So uh, finally last night, I had been telling my grand, my, my, the two grandsons, I said, I want you guys to read. I, and me and my wife gave them their, their Bibles. And we said, read Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. Because just, just a little information from Scripture on what we're going to talk about. Sure. 
So when I sat him down last night, I said, okay, I got to ask you guys a question first. I said, because there's something that you have to be a believer in Christ before you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in the way that the book of Acts that you guys read talks about. And I, and I started to ask him, I said, now, you know, you know why Jesus died? You know why he came and why he died? Yeah, Grandpa. And I, and I went through the whole thing, talked about how you, you know, you open your heart, you, you, you repent of your sins. Even if you don't think you've had any, you, you've got to turn from your past life. Cause, sure. And, and, and both of them looked at me and said, Grandpa, we already did it. Praise and God. I was like, really? Where'd you guys? Well, we knew about it. And my one grandson said, I did that at the house. And he started to tear up. Oh, that's And awesome. the other one was like, he's, he's kind of the happy-go-lucky one. He was all smiling. He said, Grandpa, I did the same thing. I asked Jesus to come into my life that I needed him to save me at home. And I was like, well, great. Amen. You guys are ready. And so then I said, so tell me what you guys read in Acts 1 and Acts 2. What was it talking about? Mm -hmm. And they told me exactly. That's awesome. And, and I said, so do you remember what Jesus said? You know, he talked about the, uh, you know, the times and that. He said, but, you know, what you need to wait for mm -hmm. is the promise sure. from the Father who's going to come. And I said, they waited 10 days for that to happen. And, you know, so, so you know, they, they were all kind of curious. And then I said, did you notice, too, when Jesus ascended, those two men that were told the disciples, what are you looking up in the skies for? Mm -hmm. and, and they said, yeah. I said, do you know what they were? And they both looked at me and said, they were angels, weren't they? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. And I said, this is what I, I want to talk to you about. Because the Holy Spirit is, was sent from heaven to those who would believe on Christ. Mm-hmm. And I said, in the, in the second chapter, you saw what happened is they were waiting. I said, they didn't even really understand what they were waiting for. Right. But when the Spirit of God moved, it said it sounded like a mighty rushing wind in that room. And then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, which was the promise that even John the Baptist made, mm -hmm. that Jesus would baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And it, I said, they began to speak. And they didn't know what they were saying. Mm -hmm. The people that heard them heard them in their own language. Right. But they didn't know what they people were saying. People don't realize that that's the miracle right yeah, there. Yeah, they didn't know what they were saying. Mm -hmm. They were just, they were worshiping and praising God as the Holy Spirit came on. Mm -hmm. And I said then, I took them to 1 Corinthians 13. I said then, Paul says here, it, though I speak in the tongues of men mm -hmm. or of angels. And then I explained to him a little bit. Now that word angels, I said in the Old Testament, they're called sons of God. Mm -hmm. And I said, they're real people. Like They're not. They're kind of like us, but not exactly like us. Mm -hmm. But they're sons of God like we're sons of God. Right. And so I kind of explained all that. And and uh, then I took them to Acts 19. And it's amazing because I'm sitting there with these eight and nine-year-old. I'm taking them through the whole Bible. And they're just they're just believing it. Yeah, eating it up. Yeah, and I said, now, now the apostle Paul went into Ephesus. Don't you wish some adults would do that? Yeah. <laughs> And he found some people who said that they had been baptized in John's baptism. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, do you know anything about the Holy Spirit? And I said, no, we haven't even heard about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I said, so what, what, they, what had happened was they had heard about repentance and water baptism mm -hmm. and believing in Jesus, but they had not heard anything about this Holy Spirit. Right. So Paul goes through the whole thing with them, and then he lays hands on them and prays and says, receive the Holy Spirit. It says they began to, and my one grandson said, speak in tongues and prophesy. <laughs> and I said, exactly, because it's the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I told them a story about me. Okay. Because I'm their grandfather, you know. Told them what happened to me. And I said, so I'm just going to lay my hands on your head and pray over you like Paul did. And the Holy Spirit, when I lay my hand on you, just, just receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I said, now, Paul, Paul goes on and talks about when you pray in tongues, you don't understand what you're saying. Because, I, and I asked both of them, it's kind of funny, I said, so when you guys talk, like to me, and you're, you're just telling me something, where's the thoughts coming from? And they said, "My our head. Mm -hmm. And I said, right. I said, these, these words won't come from your head. Yeah. Because you won't understand them. But you have to trust that God's Spirit has given it to you. Mm -hmm. And so they said, okay. So I laid hands on both of them and prayed over them. And uh, the younger one, he just started praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. 
he said, Grandpa, is that, is that right? And I said, well, let me ask you. Is it coming from your head? Right. No, it's, it's like I can feel it. It's coming from here. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's what the Bible described, wasn't it? He said, yeah. The other one started crying a little bit because he's a little bit more of a thinker. Mm -hmm. And I, I told the younger one, I said, why don't you go up and tell Grandma? And I said, me and, me, and, me and your brother will pray some more. So I just said, just relax. It's not about you. It's not about your understanding. Right. I said, just, just receive what the Holy Spirit's telling you. Just be at peace. Prayed over him again, and he started praying. He was like, <laughs> Grandpa, that came from here. I, I don't know what I'm saying. He said, will I ever know what I'm saying? I mean, kids ask the most awesome questions. Right. I said, well, that's funny you said that because Paul said that when you, you, don't, you don't understand what you pray, but you can ask for the interpretation. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's what's called tongues with the interpretation. Interpretation will be in your own language that you understand. Yeah. I told him a few things that have happened to me in the past. Sure. And he was like, Wow, that really happened? I said, yeah, it really happened. You know, I told him a story about one time I was praying. I was getting ready to preach in front of a group of about, you know, a thousand people at the conference. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just started praying in tongues at the beginning of the meeting. And then before I knew it, I, I heard, just heard a couple words in English. So as soon as I opened my mouth and started saying it, it just rolled out. Mm -hmm. And I said, there, it was for a man in the front of the, the, the congregation. And I said, he began to cry because God was, in, in the known language, God was speaking to his heart. Speaking to him, yeah. And, and he was like, that, wow, that really happens. And so we just had a great time. And then this morning, my little granddaughter, mm -hmm. she said, Grandpa, I want what my brothers have. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I need to talk to you about the first step. Right. So I explained to her, but she, you know, she's four. She was kind of like, but my daughter got saved when she was three. Sure. And a friend of mine prayed with her, and she started to pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. So so I, as I'm talking to her, I, I said, okay, you think about what I said. I'll be right back. And I went in the other room, and my wife was at her desk doing bills. Mm -hmm. She heard her two brothers start talking to her about how to accept Christ. Mm -hmm. And they said, we can pray with you right now. That's awesome. Pray with us. And she prayed with them. That's awesome. And then I came back out a few minutes later, and she said, Grandpa, Grandpa, guess what? And Chris had already told me. She said, Rowan, Rowan and Howard prayed with me, and I accepted Jesus. Praise God. And I was like, oh, okay, are you ready? She said, yeah. <laughs> so then I, I she, and she knew the scriptures and Acts. Mm -hmm. So I, we then prayed for her, and she began to pray, and she looked up at me. She's like, that's it, isn't it? I mm -hmm. said, what do you think? And I said, that's probably it. Yeah. Wow. She said, okay. And then she just started praying more. And then when I took them to play putt-putt golf. Mm -hmm. And when we pulled in down there, she said, Grandpa, I was praying in tongues all the way from Middleburg. <laughs> and she was just doing it real quiet. Yeah. And I said, do you feel the, Do you feel what the Bible says? Do you feel built up? She said, I feel really good. Amen. So, and you know... People say, ah, oh, they're just kids. No, we're just stupid adults. We don't believe, yeah. you know. My prayer today when I was running was, Lord, I want to become as a little kid again. No doubt. Well, how many times the scriptures have said that? Exactly. Come as a little child. Because I was just thinking about the whole thing last night and then mm -hmm. this morning, and then I went for a run this morning, and I was like, Lord, I want to be like a little kid. Well, you know, every year when I teach VBS and... And I did it again this year. I, I always bring up, I said, have you ever been told that you're too young to do something? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And I said, like what? And I had to laugh because one kid said, have a big hurt. <laughs> and I was like, good response. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I had to laugh and it kind of caught me off guard. Yeah. You know, one says drive, one says this, one says vote. And I said, but you got to remember something. You're never, ever too young to accept Christ. Exactly. Never. Exactly. And I said, don't let anybody tell you that. Yeah. I said, that's between you and the Lord. Yeah. You know, you know I've had parents, like, because at our communion, I always tell everybody, if you're a Christian, mm -hmm. you are free to take communion. If you're not a Christian, you are free to become one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can take communion. Right. But I especially tell some of the parents, because I've, I've had instances with parents in the past 
Well, my kid's too young. Okay, well, what are you doing Yeah. to educate your kid? Right. Because it's better to let them know when they're young right. what it's all about. Educate them. So that they can receive Christ at a younger age right. and receive everything he's done for them. Yeah, because anytime someone gets saved at an older age, what is the same thing they always say? I wish I'd have done this sooner. Exactly. And not only that, you have other things that you've already experienced yeah. that you may have avoided. Yeah, and it's manipulated how you see things. Exactly. How you feel about things. Exactly. And uh, could have avoided a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I always tell our parents, I said, look, we, your kids are free to take communion with, with the rest of us. Mm -hmm. If you feel comfortable with it. Right. But don't expect the Sunday schools to be the primary teachers of your children. Absolutely. You need to be the primary teachers of your children. I remember saying that in a sermon one time, and it kind of caught people off guard. Yeah. I said, it is not my job to teach your kids about Jesus. Exactly, exactly. I said, that's your job. I remember years ago, I had I had an individual that got upset that uh, and they were from another church, but they asked me the question. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, what do you think of a youth pastor that, you know, and somebody in his youth group got pregnant? Mm -hmm. I said, I wouldn't think of the youth pastor. Right. That's the parents' responsibility. Absolutely. It's not, it's not even the pastor's responsibility. That's right. We're like second, third, fourth level. Yeah. You're you're as a parent, you're on the front lines. That's right. You need to show the way. You need to instruct in the way. Mm -hmm. And you need to lead the way. That's right. In every aspect of yeah, the Yeah, and I know it's hard and, and but that's that's not why you go to church. That's, you know, if we are blessed enough to keep this child, I mean, that'd be like me, of course, I guess it kind of falls in since I'm the pastor there, but that'd be like me saying, you know, it's your responsibility, you know, for teachers or what. No, it's my job. Yeah. It's my wife's job. Yeah. That's what, that's our job. Yeah. Uh, to, to raise up, that's why the scriptures raise up a child in a way. Yeah. And that's why it's the only uh, commandment with promise. Yeah. And I think, too, a lot of parents... You know, they get in fear. You know, and I always have to tell them, look, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. Right. And when he's not going that way, mm -hmm. you keep believing God. Yep. Don't get discouraged. Well, I raised him right. Why is he acting like that? Because he has free will. That's right. They've got their choice. And you, you, at one point, but if you've done everything you could do, mm -hmm. possibly. And that, no, but no, no parent's perfect. No, no, no. But you have to trust that God's got it covered. If yeah. there's seeds planted there, if there's a good example planted there, you've got to trust that God, no matter what rough patch they might be going through, God can bring all things. Absolutely. And you've got to stay at peace. And parents don't need to be beating themselves up either. No, no. Um, cause I've got we live to... in the day and the age of blaming everybody. Absolutely. We've got to take responsibility for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is I've got a couple people in my church right now and they've got kids and grandkids that are, haven't been to church in years. Right. And they said, well, no, no, it's not your fault. Stop that. And it's not an unusual situation right no, now. No, it's, it's not. It's a very common, unfortunately, it's a very common situation It is. Right now. So, and they said, well, what do we need to do? I said, keep living your life. Yeah. Keep praying. Keep act, uh, acting like the Lord. I mean, keep doing that. And, yeah. and, you know, that's all you can do. Yeah. You can't force someone to do something. No, no. And I know how tough it is. I mean... There's so many influences. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to be, like my wife asked, we were talking about this the other day. She said, you know, I don't want to be grandma, no. <laughs> and I said, I don't care right. if I'm grandpa, no. Yeah. As long as the no is the right thing. That's right. You I know, said, because we have to put up, we have to look out for that. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not a popular thing. That people need to remember, and of course, I'm very new at this. It was a, it's been a month that we've yeah. had this kid, and they don't need you to be their best friend. No, they need you to be a parent. Yeah, and you know, as you get older, I'm sure, I, I know you're good friends with your your daughter and your yeah. son. Yeah, I mean now. Yeah, but uh, growing up, I mean, you had to, yeah, yeah. And them. you know, you know what? Still, which you know, I'm blessed by this. Even though they're adults, even though they have their own family. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that they will come to me and say, Dad, what do you think about this? Right. That's huge. Yeah, and it's like, you know, they don't have to do that in one sense because they are they have their own families. Right. But just the fact that they're asking me mm -hmm. is a big deal. I mean, something was done, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, okay. 
And, you know, and like when I was talking to my grandkids, I the one section of Scripture where uh, it was when the angel, and the two angels came down with, you know, the Lord to meet with Abraham about mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah. And they were walking, the four of them were walking. Yeah. And the Lord said, I can't keep from Abraham what, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because I know he will command his children and his children's mm -hmm. children. Right. And I, that always caught me. It's like, that impresses God if you as a father and a grandfather will talk to your kids mm -hmm. about the things of God. Right. And, you know, now it's like, wow, it's happening to me on, on the second level now. Yeah. It's like. Lord, thank you. Well, and I know it's like every time, we've said this before, but every night we lay him in his crib. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, obviously he's asleep. But um, we pray over him. Mm -hmm. And um, every time I pray over him, I know for sure, I'm like, Lord, this is your child. Right. I said, you've just entrusted us with him right now. I said, so, one, I, I, I pray for me and my wife to do the right thing by him. Mm hmm and um, I, we pray for his biologicals, and um, but in the same sense, this, like when they, they give their kids up to, who was the, the, the lady that gave their kid up, uh, oh, for crying out, Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, said, I'm giving them up to you. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Yeah. I mean, it's not a physical sense, but in the same sense, they belong to you. Yeah. And, and while we're training them, we need to remember that too. That's right, because... You know, like we mentioned last week's episode, even though I don't have a good relationship with my father, I did not want to bring reproach to his name. Exactly. And I don't want to have, I don't want this child to necessarily bring reproach. And I don't necessarily care about my name, but I, I do, but I don't want to bring reproach to the Lord's name. Right. That's the thing. Right. And uh, we're going to try to teach him as best as we possibly can. Yeah, and you pray, and you pray, and you do. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I always told my wife, I said, you know what, the best thing we can do is be true in our actions mm -hmm. at home right. that we preach publicly. Right. And yeah. That doesn't mean you have to be perfect, because I am far from being perfect. Well, that's, that's okay. But it just means, you know what? As far as you can be, let your yes be yes mm -hmm. on God's side and your no be no on God's side. Well, and I think the greatest compliment that I've seen towards you was it, was it your son that was called a PK? <laughs> And, of course, he had no clue what that he had was. no idea what a preacher's kid was. You know? But in the same instance, he said, he acts the same way no matter where we go. Yeah. And that's how you avoid hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, people see us just oohing and ah over him in church. and love, But you know what? We do the same thing here. Yeah. When there's nobody around. Yeah. That's the way we do. Yeah. But we're not perfect. Yeah. So. And, I mean, it even goes as far as, you know, somebody sees you get angry. Okay. Well, be angry, but don't sin. Right. What well, does that mean? I thought anger was a sin. Well, if you get angry, you know, be quick to repent. Yeah. Be quick to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. You know, and if you've offended somebody, and I know some people get offended about everything. Oh, yeah. And I think sometimes you don't have to, you don't have to go to somebody you offended because it's like, well, they'll get offended when I say sorry, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like I mentioned in last week's episode, the thing happened to me. Because, you know, most preachers can get in about any jail yeah. just to go visit, yeah. even though they don't know the people. And I had that, I had a little bit of anger because I'm sitting there, how in the world can you do this yeah. and give up a child? But then I'm like, and immediately it's like the Holy Spirit said, stupid, yeah. settle down. Yeah. And that's what I'm, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit in that respect, too. Amen. Because, Amen. Uh, do you remember, uh, what was the coach? He's, he's a big-time Christian. He used to coach the uh, Colts and the Buccaneers. Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy. And uh, he said, the main thing that I always tell people, said, before you hit that send button when you're texting, erase it. Yeah. Erase it every time. Yeah. He said, because you're going to say something stupid and you can't take it back. Yeah. And um, that's we can learn from that. Yeah. And I think the Holy Spirit does that. To do it. Don't send that. Yeah. <laughs> erase it. Yeah. So Cool off. Yeah, you have to. Because when you start, when you step back from a lot of things, you're like, "Wow, I why did I get mad over that? I was that that riled up over something so stupid." Yeah, yeah, you were, but it's an instant reaction a lot of times. And I, I still remember, and you know, your high school had rivals too, and I remember when we played our rival, and we just hated each other. I look back now, I was like, "That is so stupid." Some of the stuff we did to each other, it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. but. 
we can grow, we hope. Yeah. So. I mean, that's that's the world. Yeah. It really is the world. But you're right. The people get offended over everything. Mm -hmm. And um, what was it someone put on Facebook the other day? It was just a picture of a fence post. And it says, here's proof that this post will offend somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's sad that people get offended over everything. Yeah. Well, you know, we live in an age of whining right now. Yeah, so. and participation trophies. Yeah. And uh, what was it someone said that one time someone got upset and they said, well, do you need a counselor and a blanket yeah. or are you okay? <laughs> I actually heard someone tell that to their kid. Yeah. And I, I laughed yeah. because it was funny, because it's true. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what's interesting is, especially in the Christian realm, you know, because I hear people throw, throw around things, and I understand, I understand to a point what they're saying because it's usually kind of aimed at a, you know, usually when they're talking to me, aimed at a, pa a preacher. Mm -hmm. and, and I've heard people say, well, that guy's a prosperity preacher, which I understand what they're saying. There's some people that are just on the verge of being dishonest. Right. If they're not dishonest. And I don't want to judge them because sure. I don't know. Right. But, but I, I've said to people, what do you want, a poverty preacher? <laughs> and it's like, well, no. Okay, well, you've got to watch mm -hmm. what you really, what are you really saying? Right. Why are you really angry? The good news, to me, when I hear the word good news, that's prosperity in every realm of yeah, my it's, life. It's involved there. I mean, God has been, God has taken care of me. Oh my goodness, yes. And I consider that prosperity. Yeah. Well, somebody might say, well, because in Montana, we were technically 40, I think it was 40% under the poverty, poverty line. line. So we were like really poor. Right. I didn't know we were poor. Right. Because God met every one of our needs. You know, most poor people don't even realize they are poor. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm prosperous. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, no, this is what the government says. I don't believe anything the government says. Right. I'm prosperous, but my God meets all of my needs. Yeah. You know, so so we we really it's so easy to get caught up in it, and then you realize, wait a minute, there's Christian whiners, yeah, and there's worldly whiners. Well, they're on the same category. I said something. Of course, Wednesday night we had our business meeting at church, and I said something. I'm gonna say this now because this will air after the Belizean. Church. Oh. <laughs> um, but you're gonna hear something that a Baptist pastor you'll never hear them say, which I said, I because two months ago we brought up. Because we we wanted to be able to give the church a nice gift in Belize. Right. Whatever we had left over from the fundraising in Belize, uh, the leftovers. And I hate that sounds bad, but whatever's left, we want to give. Sometimes leftovers are really good. I uh, usually eat them every day. <laughs> meatloaf leftovers are amazing. But um, we wanted to give them a nice gift. Yeah. And um, well, two months ago, someone said, well, what about we just take up an offering the church, you know, we'll have a guarantee, blah, 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 whatever. And we tabled it. And then this past Wednesday night, I said, you know what? I don't want to do it. And, and someone just kind of looked at me and says, you don't want to take up an offering. I said, no. I said, I don't want to ask people any more things. I said, we are so good right now. Yeah. God has blessed us immensely right now. And the way we looked, and I seen the amount that we've raised and what we have left over, yeah. and I said, it's going to be a tremendous blessing. Yeah. I said, so no, I don't want to ask anybody. I said, now if people just come up and say they still want to do it, that's great. And, you know, yeah, because you will have people do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know there's a couple people still is wanting to give a, a donation. Yeah. And I said, but I'm not going to ask the church anymore. Yeah. I said, it's done. Yeah. I said, the Lord has provided abundantly above what we wanted to do. Yeah. And um, tickets are paid for, accommodations are paid for, everything's paid for outside of our luggage, and that's pretty much it. And um, we've even figured that into what we have left. And we're kind of excited about what, you know, yeah. we're going to be able yeah, to Yeah, it's them. really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so funny because I remember when we've just been doing this since January. Yeah. And uh, I remember telling the people, I said, don't you dare ask me how much it costs. I just want to know if you want to go. Yeah. And I said, you'll prove to me that you'll want to go by getting your passports. Yeah. Other than that, don't worry about anything. Because yeah. some people were asking about luggage. I said, I told you, don't worry about anything. We're going to pay for luggage. We're going to raise the money and everything, which we have. Mm -hmm. And we're still going to have a good amount left over. Yeah. And um, Wednesday night, the business meeting, I said, told you. Yeah. <laughs> told Amen. you. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, it's kind of like what Jesus said. 
Yeah, come follow me. Well, can I uh, first go? No. No. Do you want me? What about this? Don't even ask it. Yeah. Just you gonna come? Right. Let your yes be yes. I still like the what was it the one says you know well, I got to bury. Let the not the dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury their own dead. You know, um, that's I, I love that, because and the, the thing is it's two twofold. One, I'm still amazed when I see God do things. Yeah. Secondly, why are we amazed? Yeah. Because we know we can do, but I I don't ever want to lose that awe. Yeah. Of what when God does something. Um, because it just blows your mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, and going back to my grandkids, I mean, it's like, when I, even, I mean, it hasn't been that long. It's just been a day. And I think, and while well, this morning with my granddaughter, and I and I, I look at that and I'm like, Lord, how stupid can I be to complicate what yeah. you can do? Right. But we do it. And I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm yeah. like, this is awesome. What? Where have I been? Right. Lord, I backslid. I thought I need. Well, to, I need to ask you to forgive me. I shared just a few, a few episodes ago. When I was talking to Jamal this morning, I said it's hard to believe we've been doing this for six months yeah. already. But uh, look back on one of the episodes, and there was a young, uh, young boy in our church in Ohio, and he was classified as MR. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I loved, I loved him to death. And then he come to me one day and he said, "I want to be saved." And, Sadly, the first thing that went through my head is, well, everybody's going to think he's MR, he doesn't know what he's talking about, blah, blah, blah. That was the first thing that came to my head. Yeah. When the first thing that should have been coming to my head is like, praise God, let's open the Bible and see yeah. what he says. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and Clayton knew more about Scripture than most people I know. And, uh, I, and you know, I think, I think too, when we minister to kids, other people's kids especially, mm -hmm. those thoughts go through my mind. Well, I wonder what the parents are going to say. Yeah. And it's like, well, if they're part of your church, number one, well, why would they? Why would they care? Why would, mom, I just got, like I used to tell our parents, youth camp, kids would come back on fire for God. Mm -hmm. And I'd beg our parents, please don't put the fire out. Right. Because right. God's going to touch their lives. Yeah, they may say some things that cause you pain, like, I want to I wanna be a missionary or yeah. something like that. But why would that panic? You? Well, they got to go to college first. Seriously? Really? You know. It's like you're don't don't you're still giving them that line. Right. You go and go you got to go into thousands of dollars of debt. Right. And it's like we've got to be better than that. We've got to be trusting God more than that. We've got to become like little kids. The best sermon I ever heard was from a man who had a third grade education. Yeah. Never went to seminary, never went to college. Never finished high school. But I bet you he knew Jesus. He knew Jesus. Yeah. And uh, that was, not, I mean, what more do you, that's like. Um, yeah, I feel like I need to repent. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get an altar right here right yeah, now. Exactly. I mean, I'm like, Lord, I want to do this right too. I, I, I'm not an expert. Well, and, you know, the analogy I brought up was when D.L. Moody went to England. Yeah. And those guys said, well, how in the world is this dumb hick yeah. reaching people? Yeah. As much as he does, he doesn't. He's not formally educated. Yeah. And when he brought the men to his window in his hotel room, he said, "What do you see out there?" Yeah. And one was like, "Well, we see this man, see this woman, see this white guy, this black guy, Chinese, whatever." And they said, "Well, Mr. Moody, what do you see?" He said, "I see people whose souls are destined to go to hell unless we tell them about Jesus." Yeah. Huh. What else do you? Wow, what I mean, a revelation! I mean, huh? for crying out loud! <laughs> I mean, the the services I'm going to be preaching in Belize, I'm, I'm it's Luke 24, I think it's 32. When, when they were on the road, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it says, did we not have fire burning in our souls? That's what my grandkids told me. Yes. It was, it was That's right, right. It was right here. And how often do we, as we grow older in Christ, we lose that? Yeah. And I, I wish I had that burning flame from the moment when I got saved. Yeah. Because I remember I thought I could save the world. Yeah. I mean, no, and I can't. Yeah, well, I even ripped my T-shirt to see if there's a Superman thing yeah. under it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be all? Well, we need a phone booth. Yeah. Well, there's one over here. What's a, phone, what's a phone booth? No, it's, no, it's just a it's just a pay phone. It's not a phone booth. Account, yeah, everybody so. see you change it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be interesting. But, yeah, I mean, that's the heartburn I want to have. Exactly. And, and I want to be on fire. I want to do this for the Lord. Yeah. And um, when, you, when you've got to beg people to come to... The house of God. Yeah. When you've got to beg people to do work for Him, yeah. I, I kind of question things. Yeah. 
I know I'm not going to question someone's salvation. That's between them and the Lord. Right. But I really question some people's motives. Yeah. And it breaks my heart. Yeah. And um, but the sad thing is, I've I've been in that category many times. We know what it feels like to be asleep. Yeah. And uh, you know uh, what was it? Uh, oh, when I discussed about. Uh, of course, it hasn't been formally announced yet, but when I told you about Machine Gun Preacher, it's going to be here in August. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of people in my church that I've witnessed or sent the message to and told them, hey, this is what's coming. And, uh, of course, he's he's edgy. He's edgy. Which, is, you know you know me, I'm not a typical Baptist preacher. I'm not. And, but uh, he, he lives on the edge. He's a former heroin guy. He's a Hell's Angel yeah, guy. He, he came from the pits. He's man. tattooed from, you know, whatever. And uh, But the thing is, he preaches truth yeah. he doesn't beat around the bush yeah. and I, I so loved it because one of the people responded to my message says awesome let's wake this town up yeah. Amen. i said great yeah you know that's that would be awesome yeah. so uh looking forward to it and yeah and i'll be back in time yeah that's gonna be awesome so, praise the lord and uh, uh a guy in our church is a also a member of uh, bikers for christ um and i told him about it because i said i want see if you can get some of these guys to come <laughs> Is it going to be a Sunday night? Saturday. Saturday. Night. Saturday night. Okay. We done that on purpose so we didn't interfere with other churches. Okay. No, I was just thinking, you know, if you need a bigger space, I don't know how many people you can fit in yours. I think we're about one twenty-five. Okay. I think we can get almost three hundred in ours. Well, it may be an option. Okay. Um, just because, saying, but I don't want to take away. No, from, no, no. From it being your thing. Well, but, see, this is a yeah. this is why I love working with you and Benny. We don't care whose yeah. thing it is. I mean, you can be in charge. I don't care. But, no. But if we need the space. Right. Um, but just think about it. And, and I do, and there is another option too, but um, of course being the fairgrounds. And yeah, what's yeah. brought, of course we have the, the amphitheater there. And we just happen to know someone who owns a racetrack. <laughs> yeah. So, and they've always said they'll help any way they can. Yeah. Because um, I thought about that after you, we texted last night. I thought, I wonder if they're going to have enough room. Because I... I I, I'm not good at looking at yeah. other buildings and figuring out how many people we can get. There's no doubt our church will be packed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. There's no doubt. Um, because when I talk to, well, John Burr is our Bikers for Christ. They go over to Shinson on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I would love to get you guys involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, he messaged me back. He said, well, I couldn't get one of the Bikers Christ involved. He said, I got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so their chapter from Shinston's coming. And we got a chapter from Pennsylvania coming. Oh, praise God. And that's uh, Steel, Pennsylvania, I think is what the name of it was. Right. Um, but uh, they're coming. So, because I didn't want to infringe on, because their service is on Saturday nights. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to infringe on you guys either. Right. And uh, he said, I've got a feeling they'll want to just come on over. Yeah. I was like, okay. Because, I mean, he, he's a biker. That's, yeah. That's what machine, that's Sam Childers is a biker. Yeah. And um, looking forward to it and. Uh, the, I remember the first time I had him come, which was about eight years ago when I was pastoring in Ohio, the most conservative church in all of Ohio, I think. What's, it was the oldest one, too. Yeah. And uh, he just come up, and when he was preaching and all that, because it was a two-day event, Saturday we fed everybody pulled pork, Sunday he preached. And uh, you, like half, that, you like that pulled pork. I love pulled pork. <laughs> That's because you're from southeastern Ohio. That's right. <laughs> but, um, and I think I make up pretty well, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, um, the only time I've ever had it, it was good. Yeah. And? You trying to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple more pork butts out in the freezer, so. We but, call it a pork butt. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he, he, in the middle of his sermon, he says, you know what? He said, I'm not a typical missionary. He said, there's going to be missionaries coming here. We'll never mention money. He said, but we need money. Yeah. We need help. Yeah, and it gets back to what we said earlier, you know, other than prosperity preachers. Yeah. No, the truth is, usually people that bring that kind of stuff up, they don't really give. Right. And it's like you gotta be you gotta be doing the work of the kingdom. Mm hmm Absolutely. And that means you gotta be ready at any time for God to say, Hey, okay, you need to help that person. Right. Or you need to give in that situation. Well there was a scripture, it's in the gospel somewhere, I can't remember where where it is. Do you know the reason we work? So we can help other people. Exactly. That's why we are that's why we're blessed to work, make money, have jobs, so we can help other people. Exactly. And, you know, the truth is, if you, and this is not a worldly saying, this is a biblical saying, if you help other people, yeah, God will always make sure you get help. <laughs> now, now you're reminding me, I, I, I won't mention his name, if you just sow $1,000, <laughs> God will bless you with $10,000. Yeah, well, 
I'm not saying that. I'm just, right, no, I'm, no. just I'm just saying that it seems like it always works its way out. Yeah, um, you can't outgive God. No, you no, can't. No, I mean some of the most basic lessons in the Bible. Like I was talking the other day about, you know, Elijah the prophet, because you know, Malachi says that before the great and terrible day, which is the second coming of mm-hmm. Christ, that that the the spirit of the prophet Elijah will come on the scene again. And you and I both agree on the literal two, last two the prophets. Right. One's going to be Elijah. Right. Because he hasn't died yet. That's right. And the other one's Enoch, I believe. I do too. But but there's a spirit of Elijah too. And I believe that that spirit of Elijah, you can see in Elijah's life, I believe it's going to come on the church. Mm-hmm. And part of that spirit of Elijah was Elijah was led by God and he was not ashamed to obey. Yeah. He went to a widow. Right. And she, he said, what are you doing? Because God had told him, I talked to a widow over here in Zarephath. Yeah. It's, it was a non-Israelite city too. Mm-hmm. So, so he already knew God talked to somebody here. So he sees this widow and he says, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm gathering up some sticks. I got a little bit of meal. I'm going to make our last meal. Make me a cake. And we're going to die. Well, give give me some first. Yeah. But she did it. That's right. And what did God do? Blessed her tremendously. Yeah, till the end of the famine. Yeah. Because God told Elijah, this is what I'll do. There's a widow there and I'm going to take care of you through her but I'm going to take care of her through you. Right. Well, it's like someone brought up to me, and you mentioned about Elijah and the two witnesses, things like that. Someone said, what makes in the world makes you think it's Elijah? I said, well, there's a there's one verse in particular yeah. that if we disagree with that, it's going to make God a liar. So what do you mean? It said, it is appointed for once for men to die, yeah. and then after this, the judgment. Yeah. He never died. Yeah. So, but it says re- clearly in Revelation that these witnesses will die. Yeah. And they'll be resurrected. And they'll be resurrected the right in front day. of them. Yeah, yeah. Right, right in front. And the part that bothers me the most, it says, and they were resurrected right in front of them, and still some will not believe. Oh, exactly. That, that breaks exactly. your heart. Exactly. Well, Jesus was resurrected. And yes. what, what did the Pharisees do? we got to figure out a story. Yeah. And we'll pay big, we'll pay good money yep. to cover this thing up. They stole his body. Yeah. That's what they did. That yeah. or, or this happened. Yeah. No. Yeah. For crying out loud, he did what he said he was going to do. And he appeared to over 500, 500. people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what more do you... There's even non-biblical history that agrees with the resurrection of yeah. Jesus Christ. Exactly. So exactly. that should tell you something. Yeah. So what great uh, example we have there. Oh, man. Yeah. And, 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 you know, getting back to the whiny thing, I mean, it's like anything else. We have to, we have to decide. Raising our kids, we have to decide. You know what? We're just going to do what God wants us to do. Yeah. I know my wife and I, when we were before we had, before we had kids, we made a decision that when we had kids, my wife was going to raise the kids as a full time mom. Mm-hmm. And I said, "We're not. We're going to believe God. If without two incomes, we'll believe God. Right. And God will open doors for me to make the necessary money, or He'll bless us a different way." Mm-hmm. And we stuck to that because we thought it was important for our kids to have a mom at home. Right. And you know, I'm I'm not trying to put guilt on anybody else, mm-hmm. but you have to you have to wrestle those issues yourself. And they're tough to find out what God is telling you as an individual and as a couple or whatever. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you, what are you going to do? Well, you know, it was proposed to me not too long ago, and of course, talking about the boy, and uh, they said, well, and of course, they automatically brought it up. Says, well. What about sports? What about him? I said, he may never even step foot in a, on a field. Yeah. I said, I don't care what it is. If he wants to play sports, if he wants to be in the band, if he wants to do cross country, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to support him. But yeah. he will not go on a Sunday or a Wednesday if we're having church. Yeah. He will not do it. Yeah. And said, well, someone will throw a fit. I said, I don't care. Yeah. That's my child. I used to tell parents, when, especially when my kids played, look, just stand up. Mm-hmm. And I said, if your kid's really good, any yeah. coach is going to bow down and, right. and listen to you. Absolutely. But you got to say something or they will run over you, especially if they're not Christians. Because it's going on a lot. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, when I coached, there was a lot of Christians coaching. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me and, when I coached out in Montana, the, the guy, the head coach, he taught catechism at the Catholic Church on Wednesday nights. And yeah. I had church on Wednesday nights. Right. So we didn't have practice on Wednesday sure. nights. And some of the parents were like, 
well, what if we lose? I said, we're not going to lose. Mm -hmm. We only lost one game, I think. I said, we'll, we'll teach these kids how to play football, but we're going to teach them other things too. Right. There's a lot more. We'll teach them more important yeah. things. I mean, sp I think I think sports affected me. I think overall in a positive way. Sure. And, but but like our coaches, you know, my head football coach was played for Woody Hayes, mm -hmm. and and he taught us ethics. Right. I don't know if some coaches teach kids ethics anymore. There's but a few, but not many. Our coach taught us hard work mm -hmm. and ethics. And yeah, we wanted to win, but if you lost, he taught you not to enjoy the loss. Yeah. He taught you how to learn a lesson from the yeah. loss. I actually had a kid here tell me that he was taught that if he has the opportunity to destroy someone's knee to do it. Yeah, I see, that's not right. That is, that's not sports. No, no, you... Now, I'm just as, I'm as much as getting that headbanger hit. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta be, play within the rules. That's right. You, you know, do. you don't twist ankles when you're in the pile no. up. You don't bite. I had people bite me before, and <laughs> and it's like, I told, we were never taught. Well, I told you, I was stabbed in a football scrum. <laughs> it's like a three-inch blade, right in the ribs. <laughs> but that was messed up. But the sad thing is, I responded in a wrong way, too, mm -hmm. because I took the guy's knee up. Yeah. You know, obviously I wasn't a Christian then, Yeah. but I look back now and I was like, that was so stupid. Yeah, Yeah, because it's, it's just a game. It's, it's you it can is. learn from it life principles. Yeah, and you know, my cousin, I love him to death, his name's Steve. Um, he has gone down a wrong path because he is a TTUN fan, and I don't understand him in that respect, but I love him to death. Yeah. Um, and when we razz each other all the time, don't get me wrong, and he's had the advantage the past couple of years, but when it comes down to it, I still love him because he's my cousin. Yeah. And it's it's hard to say this is even an Ohio State fan. It's just a game. Yeah. Yeah. As much as I can get up for that game, it's just a game. Yeah. And I'm my my life is not gonna, you know, get any better or any worse yeah. over that game. Yeah. And see, when you let stuff like that affect you as a believer, it's kind of like as a Christian parent, mm -hmm. if you let peer pressure, because we always think peer pressure is on the kids. Right. Oh, man, there's more peer pressure on adults. On the than parents, there. yeah. And I'm like, just stand up. Mm -hmm. Stand on what you believe. Well, then the question comes, what do you believe? Right. You may not believe anything. Exactly. So you really got to search your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, I grew up in the 70s. In the 80s, you know, I was in high school, graduated in 79. So, I mean, there was a lot of bad influence going on. And yeah. we weren't even as aware of it as much as we are now. Right. And it's worse now. Right. But we're more aware now than mm -hmm. we were before. And and as a Christian, it's like, man, you know what? We've got to stick to what God says. His plan. No matter what. Mm -hmm. Because we know it's true. Right. And if you waver in that, maybe you're not believing in the plan in the first place. Exactly. And that's that's where, you know, I think that's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Because it's where you can check your heart out. Yeah. You know? Like, like I love teaching on the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Because some Christians are embarrassed of the resurrection. Wow. And it's yeah. like, well, that's not magic. It's not fairy tales yeah. it's not it's real and it really happened it's a miracle it didn't happen in a spirit world right i believe there's a spirit world. sure it's an unseen realm we talked about it in our last uh thing about supernatural yeah. stuff happening mm -hmm. there's stuff that happens it's dark too right but that's the basis of everything for us yeah because if we don't have the resurrection the rest We're of nothing. It means nothing yeah he died physically he descended mm-hmm and on the third day, he was resurrected physically. Amen. And he says, I'm coming back physically. Yep. And when you get your new body, it's going to be new, flesh and bone, physical and spirit. That's right. What can't you believe in? Yeah. There, and like we said, there's, there's biblical evidence. There's physical evidence. There's even non-biblical evidence. Exactly. Yeah. And what more do you need? Yeah. And so when we then try to live our lives like, well, this is my Christian. Christian. This is what I do when I'm in church. Mm -hmm. But when I'm out here, I lie, I cheat. Right. I, 
I, I don't have any morals. We need to we need to get balanced again. Yeah, because um, if we act, what well, shouldn't be an act for one thing. Yeah, it should be just a way of life. Exactly. If our way of life outside of the four walls of that building is like it is in the four walls inside the building, we'd be all right. Yeah, because that's that's the way we should be. Exactly. We should not be wavering just because we're in a certain or surrounded by people. There's even a question on there that says, you know, they're a new Christian. And should they be hanging around with their old crowd? That's something you got to really decide. Yeah, and, and you, you know, I, what happened to me was I immediately, because I, I worked in a steel mill, mm -hmm. I immediately began to began to witness, share the gospel. What happened to me? Not, I didn't know much, mm -hmm. but I knew what happened to me. I knew I had met Christ, and I began to share it with all my coworkers. And we had kind of a little revival in, in the place where I work. A bunch of my friends got saved because they were asking the same questions as me. Right. You know who gave us the hardest time? Was the people the that were, had been in church. Yeah. They were the ones that gave us the hardest time. Hmm. And then I remember, this was before I was married, I remember one night, because there was this place in South Wheeling that we always went to. It was like the popular. It was like a dance place. You mm -hmm. know? It was back in the 70s, you know? Disco? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of disco, but it disco that and disco that. Oh, too, my you know? goodness. Ooh. But but anyways, that's where every, all the young people that I knew hung out. Mm -hmm. So I had stopped going there for a while. And I remember one night, a guy at work asked me, he said, hey, you want to go? And I'm not going to name the place. It's not even a business name. But he said, hey, you want to go over? And, and the Lord spoke to me and said, you need to go there tonight. Mm -hmm. Which shocked me. Yeah. Because I had just stopped. Right. And I thought, is that you, Lord? You know, because I'm still a young Christian. Right. And I went. And I tell you what, I was, I was introduced into what was really going on when I went there. And you were involved in it all along before. And I couldn't see it. And yeah. I walked in and I saw people that I knew. I saw girls that I knew that were totally blown out of their minds. Mm -hmm. I saw stuff going on and it made me, it made me sick. Yeah. Because I thought, these people have no idea what's going on to them. Right. And, you know, some of them I talked to and they listened and, you know, they, they have a walk with God. I, don't, I mean, some of them you lose contact with. Mm -hmm. But... When I left that place, I was like, Lord, you rescued me from something. Amen. I just, but some people never leave it, so nothing changes. And some people can't go back to see what it's like because they're afraid they're going to fall again. Right. But the Lord showed me that, and I was, and I was like, I never saw any of the plop because I was drunk when I was right. there. But I mean, it was, it, it made my heart break. Mm -hmm. And I think we need our hearts broken sometimes. Well, and I knew when Jamal and I lived in Vegas and then we moved back to Ohio, there was a very popular place to go get wings, mm -hmm. food, stuff like that, but it was a bar. Mm -hmm. And in Vegas is where we really got rejuvenated with our relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And when we got invited to go down there, our normal friends, stuff like that, and we sat there and we just kind of looked at each other like, just does not feel that right. Didn't feel right. Yeah. No. Yeah. And we never went back. Yeah. And it's not that I was looking down upon the friends that go there, yeah. but we did not belong there anymore. Exactly. And you knew it inside. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And uh, it was just one one of those things, and and it, but it's the Holy Spirit just said, "This is not. Look around. This this is what you used to do." Yeah. And um, but I, I'm I'm thankful for people that can go in and witness to people like that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think sometimes God may call you to do do it for a short time, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's like you just got to be wise. Right. You got you got to know who you are, and you know, like I said, when the Lord took me in there, I knew immediately this is not a ministry for me. Right. I am not coming back yeah. here again, and I never did. Right. I I just cut it off, and and I lost some friends. Yeah. But I got other friends other places. You know, and sadly. Um, most of the friends that, I mean, we still converse like on Facebook or something, but the hangout, it just don't happen. We used to, you know, play the poker, right? You know, the drinking, all that stuff. 
And it just doesn't interest yeah. me anymore. But God brings other people. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's interesting. I just went back. I was at a, it was actually a funeral that I did. It was my mom's funeral. And mm -hmm. some of my friends came, you know, to show respect to my mom. And a couple of them pulled me aside. I hadn't seen them in a long time. And they were like, yeah, I watch you on Facebook. <laughs> I was like, well, praise God. Good, yeah. I said, what do you think? They said, eh, we, we, I enjoy it. Yeah. I was like, well, just keep watching. Right. And then there was a couple of them that, you know, they're believers now. And mm -hmm. we just got to talking. And of course, we got into some of the other stuff we get into on this program, too. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're on the same page as me. <laughs> oh, well, we're all on the pages in the Bible. That's good. That's right. why we're on the same page. That's right. You know, we can see things that are happening, not because we're smarter than everybody else. Well, if you had told me 20 years ago that I'd consider a Pentecostal pastor as one of my close friends, I'd be like, you're nuts. <laughs> you're nuts. <laughs> But here we are. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. But for this individual that's a fairly new Christian, you just have to, you know, examine yourself. Yeah. Let the Lord do the speaking. Yeah, and be honest with yourself. And them. Yeah. And be your friends. Because you know, you, you'll you know inside. If you get pulled into something and you can feel that gravitational force pulling you, Yeah. you just need to run. Yeah, and, and don't You know, like it. Joseph, just run. Don't fight it, just go. Yeah, just get out of there and... And don't go. Don't desire to go back. No. You know, I was thinking too, because you know, we, of course, everybody knows that we like, you know, sports. Some sports better than others. Right. But but you know, it's like with sports too. Like when I watch, because I, I I watch very little NFL, mm -hmm. but I watch college football mostly Ohio State. If there's another good game on, I may watch it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I find myself doing. I'm muted at commercials. Yeah. Because I don't know. It's, a lot of the commercials are just from certain pharmaceutical companies. Right. And it's like, I don't want to even hear that joke. No. And then, you know, I mean, the other, the other stuff, too, the pushing of the social, I just mute it and walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I'm not, but it's, it's a shame that you have to go through all that. Just to watch again. Well, the sad thing is, most of the announcers get muted too. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Especially when they get into the uh, social events or yeah. life of the players, and right. it's like, ah, yeah. I just want to watch a game. That's right. You don't need to read lips to watch football. Yeah, baseball, I just want. I just want. Sometimes I'll put the game on and I'll listen, like on a, uh, if it's a college game, if it's the college game. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to some of the local guys because yeah. they're they're just into the football games. That, and that's what it should be. Yeah, yeah. Just just do your job and let's yeah. just all enjoy. Yeah. But it's it's again it's being wise as a serpent. Yep. Gentle as a dove. And 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 you you got you know you got to meet people where they're at. I remember last week we said about that dove being that bird being the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't a pigeon. <laughs> Ain't a pigeon. <laughs> Which is good because I think the other night when I went to that couple's house, I think I hit one. Oh, did <laughs> It wasn't even a hit. It was a crunch. <laughs> and it, it's even to the point I looked in the rearview mirror and I felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> but what are you going to do? You're driving 55 mile an hour on a back road and... Something flies at you. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So, right under tire, too. Ooh. Yeah, no chance. So, um, how about a, another couple questions? Sure, something? where were we at? Uh, we're at an hour. We got carried away, didn't we? We did. But it was good. My wife got me flustered. <laughs> I'm still blaming her. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We'll pray him through an old Pentecostal term. We'll pray. We'll pray him through. Here. Pray him through it. Yeah. I think there was even there's a band, uh, an old gospel band called the McCamies. Oh yeah. They had a song. We'll pray you through it. Yeah. I don't know why I remember that, yeah. but you know, some of that's more true than what we think, though. Yeah. So it is. Is there parts of the Bible that confuse or stump you, personally? Yeah. If we think that we know everything about the Bible, we're lying. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. There's stuff I read and I'm thinking, wow, wonder, wonder if this can be taken this way. Yeah. Because if it can be taken this way, wow, most of the church is missing it. Right. And it's written in a way that you could say, hmm, that might be something different than what we think. Could be. Yeah. And we're so terrified to think that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to think within the walls. Yeah, because, you know, I think you and I talked about this during a men's meeting before everybody showed up. If we knew back then, when we started ministry, how we kind of preach and teach and act now, we may thought we was crazy. 
but you you learn. Yeah, you're enlightened, as Paul said. And I'm gonna say a word that Christians are scared to death. We evolved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? That's actually one of our questions. Is it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but so, we're using that word in a little different light. Right. Yeah. 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 But you you, have, you do you do grow into you adapt. Things. Yeah. Yeah. And you learn things, but as long as you're adapting to the Word of God, exactly, you know everything's going to be fine. Exactly. But I'm trying to think of the one thing that always confused me is, and I know the end result now, but the one thing that always confused me is God had Satan in chains and bondage, and then He lets him go. Oh, you mean at the end of yeah. Revelation? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, and I know why. I think I know why he did it, just because it just proves to show that people could live in a utopian, perfect society. And still turn. And still own. turn. Yeah. Um, but why? <laughs> just, yeah. And there's there's so many people who ask, you know, why did God create Satan? Why did God do... I'm not well, he even didn't going, create Satan. I'm, yeah, I'm not even going down yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just... That's an argument that you cannot win with well, somebody. Well, see, see, you know what? As you were just talking there, what it always comes down to, and this is... For our Calvinist friends. Yeah. What it comes down to is when you really see the gift of free will, mm -hmm. it makes you upset because it's like, but why didn't you just stop it from happening? Right. Well, you would have got mad if I did that. Yep. Because <laughs> you would have said, I wanted to try that. What is it, danged if you do and danged if you don't? Yeah, and it's like, no, that's how we mature. Both as human beings and in our relationship to God, absolutely by by our by our free will, what we choose to listen to and obey, mm -hmm. we learn even if it's the wrong decision. Right. And like in the area of being, like some Christians are afraid when they get confused to Scripture, like you said mm -hmm. earlier. But that should be a motivator to find the truth. Yeah, that should you you should want to study more. You should want to learn more. Yeah. Yeah. Most people tend to get ticked off and run away. Yeah, I was listening. I was listening to a little video early this morning, and this guy was talking about script. Something that we've talked about. I've taught on it. Genesis six, you know, the giants, the fallen angels, you know, the sons of God, the uh, you know, the cohabitating with the daughters of men, right, and having offspring. You know that whole thing. And and I like the way he presented. He said there's there's four basic theories about what this means. Mm -hmm. And he went down through the first three, and he said, now, I don't agree with these. I agree more with this, this. And, and I thought, some Christians would panic. Like, oh, yeah. Like, what, what, well, tell me what's, what's right. Well, no, these are four very popular, well-thought-out mm -hmm. streams. And people will even use Scripture to back everyone yeah. them up. Yeah, and they're streams but nobody quite knows the, the full truth yet. Mm -hmm. But there's truth. I think there's truth in all of them. Yeah. Because they get mixed. But we get afraid of the whole subject and we, we, we stick our fingers in our ears and go, nah! Bury our head in the sand. And it's like, no, but there's a truth there that God wants us to see mm -hmm. that will actually help us in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Because they all fits together. Yeah. And I don't know why. I think it's just our natural tendency to, we have to know absolute truth. Which the only absolute truth we know is Jesus is king. Yeah. I mean, and what he did on the cross for us and rose from the tomb. But there's a lot of things. I mean, that's why we need to study our Bibles. Exactly. Exactly. Because I'm sure there's things that maybe you've looked at 30 years ago. And I looked at 20, 30 years ago, whatever. And I maybe you'd see things a little bit differently. I've never, ever, ever changed my ideas about salvation. No, because Jesus is the center of everything. Yes. I mean, that's an easy one. Like last week, is Jesus really the only way to heaven? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the easy one. Right. Because it has to be really obvious. You know, like those things that you wonder about when, you know, when it talks about they, Jesus, God told uh, these soldiers to go in and kill every man, woman, and child. Yeah. Well, I thought you said he was merciful. You got to read into things. Yeah. You got to see the context of why he did these things, yeah. and he's what he's trying to prove. Yeah. Um, why does he allow you know kids to be aborted? Why does he allow 
kids to die at a, a young age of cancer? Or why does he allow a young couple to die in a man? He's not necessarily allowing these things. It's just things that happen. That's right. Because of choices that mankind has been making Back to that thousands of years. Yeah. Back to that free will. Yeah, because you let a lot of things in. And we got to realize we are in a sin-filled world. Yeah. yeah, and it's like this. Like we were talking just, just a minute ago about important about leaving friends once you start walking with God. Mm -hmm. Okay, think about this. You have an alcoholic. He comes to Christ. He's miraculously renewed, mm -hmm. born again. He's living for God. He goes and gets caught up with a bunch of his ex-buddies. Yeah. He starts to drink again. Come on, it's just one. Yeah, he goes off the wagon. Why'd God let that happen? Yeah. God didn't let it happen. He made his choice. Well, why'd God create alcohol? And it's like, those those are endless questions. It's that, a no-win situation exactly. in that argument. You need to look. Well, if that man wouldn't have said yes, he was already rescued. Right. If he wouldn't have said, okay, well, I'll just try one. He already knew he shouldn't try one. He knew there was a second one coming. Exactly. So it was his choice. That's right. So what do you want, God, to violate your choice? Yeah. But but no, I, I make my own choice. Well, yeah. you just proved our own point. Exactly. And that's what we've got to come to grips with. Yeah, and... Uh, we can't. We got to stop blaming God for everything. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's our choice. Yeah, and like I'll, I'll read something in the Bible that confused me. Like it took me years to come out and really say, "Here's what I believe about Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. I believed it from the first time I saw it because yeah. it's like, well, how can you interpret that any, any other right. way? But I didn't know enough, mm -hmm. so I just stayed away from it. But I'd find myself going back to it. Because it was answering other questions. Questions, yeah. And I was like, these things are hooked. How dare you cross-reference? Yeah, I was like, this is a problem for me, God. These things are hooked. I can't stay on this much longer by itself because it circles back comes to back to this. Yeah. And holy moly. I was going to say something else. But yeah. I, I'm, not ready, I'm not ready to take the heat for this other thing. Yeah. So you just keep going. Well, there's there's even people in the ministry that's scared to say stuff because they think people think they're crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you remember the, the um, testimony that Rick gave? Yeah. You know, he come up to me, and I, you know, I, I said, Rick, they need to hear this. I'm talking about the people at our church. So I gave him the pulpit on Sunday. Yeah. And he just gave his testimony and things like this. And he said, people don't think I'm crazy. I said, so what? Yeah. You know what you encountered. And it lines up with Scripture. Yeah. So what else do you need? Yeah. You know, I just heard a testimony today from uh, a husband and wife in our church. And the, the husband's battling some stuff. He's an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. he, he loves God. He's believing God for, you know, miraculous intervention and strength and all that. And his wife, you know, she's war a little worn out, but she's believing God too. Mm -hmm. So I called to check up on him. And... Uh, so they were talking to me, and they said, uh, we got a testimony. I said, all right, I want to hear it. And they said the last time we were at this, the hospital that they go to, and uh, he, was, he was going through some, some tests and everything, and their nurse came in, mm -hmm. a young, young girl, young, young woman, and uh, he, the wife was telling me, and she said, and, you know, my husband said, so how, you know, how's your family? And she started crying. Mm -hmm. She said, well, me, you know, we've been trying to get pregnant. And haven't been able to do it. And here he is in for, like, it's not, I mean, it's not like a major, major thing, but he's been struggling with it. Sure. He says, can me and my wife pray for you? Mm -hmm. And she started crying, really crying. Right. So they prayed for her. And she said, the nurse said to them, so next time I see you, I'm going to be pregnant? And they said, yes. Well, long story short, they hadn't seen him. The nurse got the phone number of this couple huh. and called. And, and this just happened just recently. They called and said, you know, I had this so and so. I, had, I hadn't seen you in a while, but mm -hmm. I want to let you know. I'm 10 weeks pregnant. Wow. That's pretty awesome. And I, and I told, I told uh, uh, the wife, I said, you see, you guys weren't selfish. Right. You're battling with something right now. We're believing God with you. But you didn't let it make you so selfish yeah. that you didn't reach out. 
and say, well, God can change that situation for you. And, you know, even that nurse looked at them and said, look what they're going through, and they're concerned about me. Exactly. That's huge. Exactly. And yet, you know, will I God answer that prayer? Because he did. They prayed. Yeah. You know, and then people say, well, what about, it? yeah, but why are we not willing to try? Right. I think, to me, it's all about praying and believing. Yeah. I, the I faith has to be there. Open-ended prayers, I, I yeah. think they're useless. Well, I mean, J James says, you know, if anyone pray, ask for wisdom, let him ask in faith, nothing yeah. wavering, because the, the man who wavers will not receive anything. Right. And so I know that's hard for, especially if you're in that situation, mm -hmm. it's hard for you to believe you. Well, God's not going to hear my prayer because I'm not asking in right. faith. Well, no, he wants you to trust him. That's that's what it's all about. Well, before we got this young man, um, of course, we've been married be 21 years in December, and that's been our desire from day one is to have kids. Yeah. And for whatever reason, it's never happened. Yeah. And of course, I've had both sides of the camp. One said, "Well, what did you do wrong against God?" <laughs> no, that's not. Thanks. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the other hand, well, just keep trying to. Yeah, we do. And then here recently, right before we got him, we was about ready to dismantle the nursery that we yeah. had set up. Yeah. And that was tough. Yeah. And. Everybody says, don't give up on God. I said, we're not giving up on God. Yeah. You need to realize we're not. But we have some situations. We may have to give up the room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, we're not giving up on God. I said, my faith is strong within that. Yeah. And not to be cliche, but even if we didn't give get that kid, we're still going to praise him. Yeah. And we would have. Yeah. We would have been crying a little bit. Yeah. Because it would have been bittersweet. Sure. Yeah. Um, but in the same instance, we're, we're not blaming God for this. Yeah. Because I actually had someone one time says, well, you blame God for that? I said, actually not. Yeah. Well, your wife should have been able to have kids. Well, it's not part of the deal. Yeah. And there's a reason that she's not. Yeah. And yeah, I know she struggled with it. I struggle with it. But the thing is, we said, that's why adoption happens. Yeah. And then when the adoption didn't happen, people said, well, what did you do wrong? We didn't do nothing. That's, that's like the whole thing. Well, why is that guy blind? Was it his sin or was his parents' sin? And Jesus said neither. Neither. <laughs> you know? And I'm not we, saying... It's amazing we miss that, that whole energy yes. a lot of times. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying my wife and I never did anything wrong. Yeah. But in the same instance, in that respect, it's not because of something we did wrong. So You don't have to point a finger. No. You just move on and let God do, do what he wants to I do. I still remember when we started going to the church in Ohio. I was not in the ministry yet. We had just moved back from Vegas. And it was actually my grandmother's church. I'd been there many years, but it was my grandmother's church. Mm -hmm. The same guy that's a pastor there now preached my ordination three years ago. And um, I still remember we, when we went into the Sunday school class, they're like, I don't know if you want to be in the Sunday school class or not. And uh, we're like, why? And they're like, well, everybody in here is getting pregnant. So there must be something about the water. I said, I'm just going to tell you that ain't going to happen. And they're like, are you trying to say God can't? I said, I'm going to tell you what. This will be the greatest immaculate reception next to Mary herself. Yeah. And they're like, and then they finally understood why. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we feel so bad. I said, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, don't worry about it. Yeah. So we, we just got to rely on the Lord no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? The truth is God will turn things mm -hmm. for good. Yeah. And, and you've got you've to walk it out. And even like I put on Facebook, I said, today... It's one month today that our lives changed. Oh, it's been a month already. It's been a month already. Wow. Hard to believe. A month went fast. Because that's when we were. I remember when you called me the day. Yeah. Yeah. You were the first person yeah. we called. Yeah. And um, and I still remember you were screaming on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> because I know that, I, and I trust this, I know that you and your wife were praying. Yeah. And have been praying for that. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it's hard to believe it's been a month. Yeah, that's already. awesome. Wow. But yeah, to answer your question, there's of course there's stuff that confuses us. Yeah. Just because we're preachers don't mean we... There's a lot of mysteries. Yeah. That's why we're supposed to seek God every day. Yeah. I mean, there's things that I'd like to know. I'd like to know what Jesus wrote in the sand. Yeah. And you know what? You know what? When we, when we are not seeking the mysteries mm -hmm. that God willingly wants to reveal. Right. That little child inside of us is dying. It's, it's yeah. But it can be revived. Yeah. I shouldn't say dying. I should say it's falling asleep. Well, yeah. Because that's more that's more scriptural, really. Yeah, well. We're falling, because we're not going to die. No. Because we're born again. But, right. But you can become carnal. Oh, absolutely. And that's falling asleep. 
Yeah. Thinking that this world's real, what the world says, but the world that God says is real is not real. And there's sadly, there's some people that think that they're just on fire for the Lord and they're just become carnal. Yeah, exactly. And of course, that brings back to some of, and to the, some of the prosperity. Yeah. Preachers out there. Yeah. They just lost their sight. Yeah. They, they think prosperity is just a one-dimensional thing, and it's not. It's to be prosperous is to be in relationship with God, who is the Creator of all things, right. who can get you through anything. Mm -hmm. And when you're through it, you're much better off on the other side than you've ever been. And there's some of these people that, and I won't name them obviously, but name certain preachers, prosperity preachers, and you can look and at one time they were. Wonderful preachers. Yeah. I mean, just preaching the Word of God. Yeah. And then just something just got yeah. them. Yeah. Well, you know, pride. Yeah. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I think that's in the Bible somewhere. I right? think so. <laughs> and we have to be aware of all these things. Right. You know? And because if we don't watch, it'll easily grab a hold of yeah. us. Yeah. You know, you know, it's no different for a politician. No. So a lot of people start out right. But right. when they get there, the love of the love of the flesh, the love the lust of the, the world, the lust of things, it well, gets If I don't do this, I'm not going to get reelected. Yeah, yeah. You know. Happens to doctors, happens to teachers, happens to coaches, happens to the guy next door. Right. It happens to all of us. That's why we have the scriptures. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. And people need to remember it happens to pastors. Too. Yeah, and Christians need to just stay awake and pray for one another. Right. And that's not the unpardonable sin. People, right. people that get caught up in that can... And be turned back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there's been so many examples of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still thrilled. Because it was so funny. I told you about the last time we had Machine Gun Preacher. Mm -hmm. And there was a prostitute in our church mm -hmm. um, from Huntington. Mm -hmm. And I told you that now she's Sunday school teacher. Yeah. Well, the guy that books the Machine Gun Preacher, he's an, he's an Australian. Mm -hmm. And he was in Australia last night when I was talking to him. He called me. And... Uh, of course, my wife was like, put him on speaker. I put him on because she loves to hear him talk. His name's Kevin. He's a, he's a wonderful guy. He actually came to Ohio when he was at our church last time. Yeah. And uh, he said, I, I remember that church. I said, I remember everything well. And I said, well, I, I need to share something with you. I said, it's kind of can be uplifting to you as well. I said, there was a lady there that one day, and she gave her life to Christ. She mm -hmm. was a prostitute. He said, I, I remember there was like seven or eight. Or I said, yeah, there, we had seven people give their life to the Lord. And I said, you know that lady now is teaching Sunday school in her local church in West Virginia? And he's like, praise God. I mean, he was yeah. just happy about that. Amen. Because that's what it's about. Yeah. It's seeing, Transformation. Yeah, seeing the Lord transform people. Yeah. And how dare we say that someone can't be transformed? Yeah. yeah. You tell me God can't do something? Yeah. Maybe, maybe some people say that because they realize, I haven't let him transform me. Could be. And that's a choice of the Lord. Maybe they too. feel a little guilty. Yeah, that's our choice too. It, it is. Because uh, we've been given all things well, that sometimes pertain to life and God. And change can be terrifying sometimes. All the time. And um, But you know what? If if you just do like Moses and just step into that water, yeah, and he's going to provide the way. And, and you know what? We've learned it, but every new, new opportunity, every mm -hmm. new step, we're like, what if there's crocodiles in that water? Right. <laughs> what if there's... We question. Yeah. And, and we need to... All of us, we need to get to the place where we just trust him. Yeah, that's all we that's all we can do, and it's all we need to do. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of answers that, I would think. Yeah. Um. I think this one I'll ask, and I think our answer will be shorter than our shortest answer last week. Have you ever believed in evolution? No. No. <laughs> no. And I w I was a science nerd. Yeah. I mean, more of a math nerd, but I like science as well. There's never been any proof. Of evolution. Yeah. Darwinian evolution. Darwinian, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, things do change. Right. And evolve. Yeah, because not, But not in the sense that... We even seen that on Noah's Ark. Yeah. I mean, people always ask, well, how do they get 3,000 kinds of dogs? Well, they didn't. They had one kind of dog, and it was most likely a wolf. Yeah. And, as, and, and science proves this. As you keep breeding and breeding and breeding, they lose DNA, and it changes DNA. Exactly. But that's not Darwinian evolution. Right. Um, and, and the reason they lose DNA is because of the fall. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, have you I mean we're getting our genetic makeup's getting weaker and weaker. Yeah. Because of the de decay. Have you ever heard of a, a man that he's a he, he's one of these that apologetics that he debates all the time. His name's Ken Hoban. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Ken Hovind brought up a very good point one time. He says, when I was brought into a debate, he said they wanted me to bring in 20 questions and the other gentleman to bring in 20 questions, and they would decide which one they're going to ask. So he said the odd thing was they never asked any of the questions that I proposed. And one of them was great. He said, you know, just think of a termite. He said, what do termites feed on? Wood. He said, you know, the amazing thing about termites is they cannot digest wood. He said, so there's a tiny, tiny individual uh, thing that, that lives within them that digests the wood for them. And he says, if the, the thing, the microorganism cannot live without the termite, the termite cannot live without the microorganism. Which one evolved first? It's a good point. <laughs> you know. The wood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because they have to have each other. Yeah. And so how do you how do you prove evolution? You can't. No, you can't. And if evolution happened, we would see it happen still. Because it, it would still be happening. Yes, it yeah. would still be happening. Yeah. Um, now there's some people that I know and I'm seeing quite a few of them that kind of remind me of monkeys. <laughs> but you know, yeah, we're close in DNA. Yeah. But I've we're never still, seen, but we're still different. It's still very different. Yeah. I mean, you've never and that, seen the law. And, and the Bible never says that God didn't create uh, other beings that, you know, species in the earth that mm -hmm. weren't smart. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, that that's a thing that humans try. Well, we're the only intelligent being. No, there's some monkeys that are pretty intelligent. Yeah. But they're not in the same category. What is us. it that, that well, there was a very famous monkey with Jane Goodall, and I can't remember what the name is. But that monkey could... It was actually a gorilla, wasn't it? Something, yeah. yeah. But knew sign language. Yeah, yeah. I mean, had the capacity to communicate via sign language. Yeah. I've read sign language. I've tried, and I'm still stupid. I know some things. Well, I, thank I, you. I, I, had like a, that, I had a friend. He's with the Lord now. He was a pastor in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And before he got saved, he was actually in the... the um, oh, what was the tribe? The Karen tribe is what tribe he was from. And the Karens are historically have been fighting the Burmese government for mm -hmm. years. So he was a jungle fighter. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me a story one time I was there about, he said, we were out in the jungle, and he said, we uh, our patrol came up on this, this um, group of, he called them gorillas, and he said, but this, this type of gorilla is very intelligent. Mm -hmm. And he said, they surrounded our 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 unit, and they, these are armed soldiers. Right. They surrounded them and ambushed them when we were throwing rocks at them. He said they outflanked our soldiers, <laughs> and they had them pinned down for hours. Just throwing rocks, they, and they were playing around with them. Yeah. So that's a pretty intelligent animal. Right. But it's not a human. No. They didn't have guns. No. <laughs> <laughs> they knew how to throw rocks, right. and they knew how to maneuver in the jungle. Mm -hmm. But they were still... Beings that were not as smart yeah. as us intellectually. Because I've seen this one thing one time where they, they try to prove these other species are smart, you know, whatever. And you're right, they are smart. And they actually gave a gun to, I think it was actually a gorilla. Mm -hmm. But the gorilla did not know how to shoot it. You know what the gorilla did? He got the gun, used it, and started beating. <laughs> I mean... Well, I heard a guy talk one time. He said, he said, look, if we were able to go back, you know, to like the Stone Age mm -hmm. and drop a fully functional motorcycle in the middle of a tribe, mm -hmm. he said they would figure out how to use it, but they wouldn't know how it worked. Right. And when it ran out of gasoline, or they wouldn't know how to, they, they did not have the capabilities of, figuring out how to do the whole process to put the whole thing together. Mm -hmm. And he said, because you just don't come up with that stuff. Right. And that's where, you know, technology is given. Mm -hmm. And God gives us certain things at certain times as, 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 as beings, as right. human beings. And we see that. And we also see from Scripture that fallen beings also gave technology. Sure. And it developed on the sinful side of it. Right. So there's always a, a cause and effect. It's not like we're just out here floating around evolving on our own. Right. We're not. There's other influences. Mm -hmm. And, well, I mean, that could be environmental. Exactly. It could be financial. I mean, there's all kinds yeah. of things. All kinds of things that happen that we have to adapt to. And uh, 
Christians don't need to be scared of the word evolution. No, no. Now, there's a difference between evolution and Darwinian evolution. Exactly. So, I mean, I believe that things evolve. Yeah. Darwinian evolution has been covering up things that the Bible said were true. Right. Giants. Yeah. Other species. I mean, because it doesn't fit their narrative. And even Charles Darwin himself said, you know, if I'm proven wrong, I will admit I'm wrong. But he died first. Yeah. So... <laughs> But it's been disproven yeah, so many times. He really found out how wrong he was. Yeah. Sad, sad Sadly true. say. Sad but true. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, I, I think we both agree that neither one of us have ever believed in evolution. No. Even before being a believer, I never never even had a thought of it. The now, when I was a sinner, I have acted like a baboon. Before, <laughs> I still do from time to time, <laughs> from what I'm told. Uh, but you know, the funny thing is, of course, you know, in America, they do teach evolution in schools. Yeah. Uh, for the most part. As a fact. And, yeah, and believes you can't. Really? You're taught the literal six-day account of creation. Wow. Public and private schools. Wow. That's what they're taught. Of course, they have that Catholic base yeah. that's down there. So there's a basis of something. Yeah. And um, I'm thankful for that part. Yeah. Because I remember going into a school one time because they asked me to come in and, and speak to kids, uh, high school you, kids. You would never get asked to come in and speak to high school kids. Never. Here. Not anymore. No. When I first came here, you would. Right. But not anymore. But yeah, they, they even introduced me and said, this is Pastor Ed, he's with such and such church and here in Orange Walk, and uh, he would love to tell you about Jesus. I'm like, no. And you're in the third world country? Yeah. You know, and, and we're the powerhouse? <laughs> but, um, which I don't believe that much either anymore. But, no, no. you know, when I went in and, and they were taught, and I was observing the teacher, and they were taught, you know, on day one, this is what happened. Day two, this is like, wow, yeah. this is amazing. Yeah, you know, as as residents of this country, mm -hmm. we are not in Kansas anymore. No. We no. haven't been for a while. Long time. And we need to wake up as the church and Absolutely. realize we are in the, the grasp of a very dark and evil thing. Yeah. And the elections aren't going to get us out of it. No. They may be a part of it. <coughs> we got to remember. We have to get people that love God, that have a heart for, for the, the kingdom of God, Standing up and, and doing the things we need to do. Right. We've got to get back to back to Christ. Serving God. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. So that's uh, evolution. How about another one that's kind of, it's a legalistic issue. Okay. And I believe it's strictly a legalist. It's not even biblical. And I'm not being disrespectful. That's not what I mean. Does it matter if you use grape juice or wine for communion? No. No. It just says, do this in honor of me. If you want to be biblical, <laughs> use wine. Yeah. I mean, we don't at our church, but it's not because I right. think it's right or wrong. I just, there's other issues that can come up. Yeah, and we don't either. I have been in churches that I've been yeah. members Oversea, of. Too. Overseas, you mostly it's get It's commonplace wine. there. Yeah. yeah, because people drink wine. Yeah, not to get drunk. No, in America, we drink to get drunk. Right. I mean, I grew up in the Ohio Valley. Mm -hmm. Everybody I knew that drank drank to get drunk, even right. as a kid growing up. Yeah. Even even when our parents did, they they was like, "Oh, I'm gonna drink to get drunk," and then they'd sit there, my uncles, and they'd drink two cases of beer. Mm -hmm. You were tipsy. Yeah. I don't care how big a boy you are. <laughs> yeah. And and it's like, okay, come on. Well, you know, how, how do you respond to the arguments that well, you, what if you're serving wine and someone's got an alcohol problem? I understand that. You know. You know, I know some churches that give choices. Yeah. You know, here's the wine line. Hey, wait a minute. You're getting back that wine line for the third time. I, I've got a kind of joke. <laughs> I mean, I won't say her name, but it was hilarious. I told you that what happened when I served, uh, when I went to Valerie's house mm -hmm. and served her communion before she passed. And the little cremate things are kind of fermented. Yeah. And they were strong. <laughs> and uh, this last communion, this lady at church, she's a hoot. And she's like, Pastor Adam, I'm just going to tell you something. If you just happen to run out of the sacraments, I'll take those that you got in the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> and she just started dying laughing. I was like, yeah, I can see that. I was like, I don't think you need any help. <laughs> but uh, to me, that's just... Yeah, that, that it really is more of a U.S. thing. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's, it's because of our history as a nation. I mean, we had, what was it, which amendment was it that outlawed alcohol? 14th, 13th, or 14th, 13th, 14th, 13th, 14th, 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 14th,
But I mean, it's it, it's a cultural thing for us mostly as Americans, and you know I don't push it one way or the other. It's like you know if if you're an ex alcoholic or you you have that in your family, mm -hmm. man, just just be safe. Yeah. But don't be in fear, but be safe. Right. It's not going to send you to hell. But this is also an argument that I'm not going to do. Yeah, I, I I you know I used to engage in foolish arguments when I was younger. Yeah. But it's like. I realized that everybody that engaged me in a foolish argument was a fool. Yeah. And I was a fool for act, engaging right. back. And it's like, I'm just not going to, I don't want to get into that. Well, I, I told you that, you know, there's a friend of mine, and he is a friend of mine, but he will fist fight you over this topic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to be wine. It has to be this. Yeah. And I'm like, why? Yeah. You know, what if you don't have the ability to have that? I mean, like you mentioned about, where was you? In the yeah, I was in the jungle in northern yeah. Thailand, and we took communion with what we had. We had, <laughs> we, we did this with the people up there, too. Mm -hmm. We had strawberry pop that was sold everywhere there, and it was horrible strawberry pop. Yeah. And we had Oreo cookies, and so we broke the Oreo cookies because they wanted to do communion. That's all we had. Yeah. So we had communion. Right. So we spoke the words of Jesus over it. We blessed it, and yeah. it turned into... Little Catholic Junior. The Oreo cookie turned in <laughs> to bread. Yeah. <laughs> I won't go as far as saying it turned into the flesh. flesh yeah. It turned into bread. <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. Well <laughs> And I wish that strawberry pop would have turned into wine. Because it was awful. <laughs> it <huh>? was awful. <laughs> but I mean we had communion and people were blessed. And, yeah. And you know, I don't do that in here. Right. Well, and you know, the thing is, because you know, we got everything readily available, whatever yeah, we need. I mean Of course now the past I think it's two or three months. My wife has actually been making the unleavened bread. Oh yeah, that's that's even better. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day. They said, "Can we go back to the old pouring the?" All right. And I said, "Yeah, when the when the pre-made ones run out." <laughs> we are not wasting when the, when the Lord's COVID money. when the COVID communion runs out. We're not wasting the Lord's money. <laughs> we are good stewards of the Lord's yeah, money. But I really don't like those little wafers. No. Every. The ones in the Catholic Church were a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. but they always stick to the top of your mouth. I, I still, think they're made from styrofoam. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I really do. Well, I still remember when we did communion, when we lived in Belize, there was a little girl down there, and, and, and I knew her situation. She didn't come from a great home, yeah. didn't get a lot to eat, and then I remember after communion, she came up and she tugged on my shirt. Pastor Ed, can I have some more of Jesus? <laughs> I was like, come here. <laughs> you, you can clean up. Yeah. You can have all you want. Yeah, yeah the priests were allowed to eat the, what was left over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, you can have the leftovers. Well, this same girl, uh, we always used to have um, candlelight services on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point we had one central candle, obviously representing Jesus. And then everybody else bring their candle. And, of course, it was dark in there. And by the time everybody lived, it was like this is now. And by time, and her name's Kelsey. Kelsey now, I think, is like 20 years old. Wow. 18, 19, 20 years old, something like that. She's also the same one that gave me the shilling in Belize. Oh, yeah, yeah, It got yeah, us to yeah. the exact dollar, exact cent, what we needed. Um, but uh, I remember when it came to her, she came up and, and she was so sad because there was no more candles. We ran out. I mean, she was so sad. And uh, she started just dropping her head. This time, she was like eight, nine years old. Yeah. And uh, I was like, Kelsey. She looked at me and said, come here. I said, you want to hold the Jesus candle? And she was Made her day. Can I really? <laughs> and she, with the biggest of pride, she just held that candle. Yeah. Because, you know, they, they take that stuff seriously. Yeah. yeah. And um, It has meaning. Yes. And, uh, you know, the last time we went down four years ago, here's Kelsey, all grown up now. There's a picture on my Facebook of her. She said, I still remember when you let me hold that candle. Yeah. And I was like, that's that's cool. Yeah. Amen. You know, and things like that. that stuff does that to... Does things to people. Yeah. I mean, it has to me. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, there's one question left. We're about an hour and 35. Okay. Um, this can be a deep question, but we've addressed it before, kind we, of. We are experts at tackling deep questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We know it all. Nothing I'm gonna put, sums us. I'm going to put my rubber boots on <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it supposed to rain? <laughs> so. Well, I don't know. Maybe something else. Maybe something else. <laughs> But we've kind of addressed this before, and just to kind of hit on it again, do you believe we're in the end of times? Why or why not? I do. Me too. I don't know where we're at. All right. I'm not going to predict a date. No. Um, some days I think we're really close to the end. Mm -hmm. Other days I don't. 
But the main thing is just look around. Well, Scripture warns us, you know, the, the pestilences in diverse places, the earthquakes. Yeah. Um, the and things. now we've got people that have the ability and the means. They're making pestilence. Yeah. They're, make, they're going to cause famines. Well, and people said, well, we've been at war for thousands of years. Yeah, but. Yeah. Now now they're saying, we might get in a nuclear war, but we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. It's like, no. There's no I grew up there. during the Cold War. Yeah. It was called mad for something. Right. And it's, mad, it's even more mad now because people think, well, we could pull this off. Quit rooting for the home team. Right. Wake up, Christians. Yeah. You know, we need to realize we are on Team Jesus first and foremost. Exactly, exactly. And you look around and you see, you know. I, I mean, I've never seen it as clearly as I do now. You know, people say, well, we don't have an idolatry around here. Oh, my God. And I'm not even talking about, well, that guy's an idolater. He puts football above. Right. Okay, I think sports can be a bad issue. But I'm telling you, we have idolatry. And sacrifices going on all around us. We're just not aware of it. Yep. But people are becoming more aware. And I was just telling my wife today that new movie out that Jim Caviezel did based on... Um, she, my wife said, I am not going to go see that movie. You go see it. I do want to see it. Yeah, I do too. But I, I, I told her, I said, our nation... It's in New Martinsville. Like yeah, that. I know. I said, our nation, if you think... There's a lot of Christians in our nation, but there's a lot of lukewarm, sleeping Christians right. too. This that that this film brings out how really rotten, yeah, society, our society especially, is to the core because we're the number one mm -hmm. pr promoters and users of this crap. Yes, yeah. the, the 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 pedophile. Right. And, and we're like the frog in the water on the oven. Mm -hmm. We still think... It's okay. Or we still think, oh, no, that's just a small... No, it's growing. It's huge. And then, you know, I wasn't aware. I watched some stuff the other day on, on, on YouTube about um, just some of these ceremonies that they've had at football games, you know, their shows. Right. And what, what, they, what they're really all about. It's yeah. about sacrifice and... It's Satanism. And well, look what we had on the Grammys this exactly. year. Exactly. Look what we've had in the Super Bowl halftime shows the yeah. past few years. Yeah. Look about all the cartoons we're seeing, the things we're seeing on public television. Yeah, and it's glorifying yes. this whole idolatry, sacrifice, satanic thing. And it's trying to get us to a point of acceptance. Exactly. And it's and it's like, you, you need to wake up and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And... If, if these aren't the last days, they're really going to oh, be horrible. I can't even imagine. Yeah. But I don't I, want to imagine. But I think we're, we, you know, we, we may be past toe dipping into it. Mm -hmm. We might be ankle or knee. We may knee. be ankle or knee deep. Yeah. But we're headed there. And, and, and I think we're going to see a lot more stuff in the next few years. And if, it, like I said the other, uh, our, on our last broadcast, if... If we have a revival and the world turns back to Christ and slows this thing down, mm -hmm. fine. Right. I'll, I'll be I'll be happy with that too. Mm -hmm. Because there are signs that some of this stuff is being there's pushed pocket, back. There's pockets. Yeah, there's pushback on it, mm -hmm. and there's some retreating. But it ain't going to be over. No. Well, even when he was interviewing Jim Caviezel, um, of course he brought up passion because he was in mm -hmm. Passion of Christ. He said, "I'm seeing the exact same thing happen." That happened to us mm -hmm. when we tried to bring up passion. Yeah. He said, but now it's much worse. Yeah. He said, we got a lot of pushback on passion. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he said, they tried to, and he said, I'm going to tell you what. He said, there are people trying to force what we're doing now to go away. Yeah. And he said, I'm not saying this to make money. He said, I don't even care about money. Yeah. He said, but if you want to bring attention to it, go watch the movie. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that Jim Caviezel, because uh, I, I just watched an interview with him. Mm hmm. The one thing he said before he, you know, did the, the Passion of the Christ, Mel Gibson, you know, Jim Caviezel agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. And then a couple days later, Mel Gibson called him back and said, now are you sure? Because it, and he was a hot actor at that time. Yeah. This will ruin your career in Hollywood. Right. And he said, yes. 
But he said there was attack after attack. After, I mean, and it's a long story. You can go right. online and, and listen to the testimony. Well, look what happened to Kevin Sorbo. That's yeah. another one. Uh, there was another, I cannot remember the lady's name. Very popular actress, but um, she got kicked off everything because she stood up for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to happen more and, and we more. shouldn't we shouldn't think that was well they were just being too radical no you, you don't have to be radical at all you just have to be honest you could be calm and, and collected well, let's just be honest Jesus was radical at times yeah yeah but I don't think he acted like a, a no. nutcase no no he just knew who what he believed he knew who he believed yep. in and when you're when you when you know who you believe in and yep. what you believe your calmness freaks people out yeah, because my cousin who lives in North Carolina, um, just I think he's about five, ten years older than me, um, is battling um, pretty tough cancer. Mm -hmm. And someone said, why aren't you upset? He said, I know whom I believe and I am persuaded yeah. that he is going to finish what he started. Yeah, and see, that freaks people out. Yes, it does. It freaks them out. You know, I told a story the other night at our Wednesday night service. And, and, I mean, you can go read the book or you can watch the movie. There's an old movie made about Corey Tin Boone. Oh, yeah. And I talked about her dad, who was in his late 80s. And in the movie, it shows him when they began to hand out the stars, mm -hmm. you know, the, where the Jewish people had to go and register after the Nazis took over um, Holland. He went, as a, he was a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want my star. And they said, you're, you're not Jewish. Right. And he said, no, I am. Because I, I, I trace my heritage through Christ back to Abraham. Hmm. And, and I, I challenged our church. I said, you know why he could do that? Because he read the word of God and believed it. Yeah. He had a foundation. He was prepared. Because I was talking about where this where John the Baptist was foretold to come to prepare the people right. for the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're in that same position. Today. Absolutely. But but we have to have a foundation. Yeah. And, and we have to make those decisions. We do. And if yeah. you don't have a foundation of Christ, you better reconsider your foundation. Yes, yeah, so I look at Jim Caviezel and I think uh, somebody might say, "Well, he's a Catholic." Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah. He loves Jesus. Right. Well, how can Catholics love? You? Well, just listen to him. Listen to him. I mean, he loves the Lord. That's when we need to get past this moniker of denominations. Yeah, I mean, they. I don't have any doubt mm -hmm. that he's a believer. I actually had someone ask me, "said Do you believe there's actually going to be Catholics in heaven?" I said, "Sure." Yeah. I said, "Guess what? There's going to be Baptists. It's going to be in hell too." Yeah. I said, "We need to really get past if if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Exactly. I'm going to see you in heaven. I don't care what's on your door. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't." Yeah. So let's just get over that garbage. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of, some of the stuff's kind of like the communion question. Yeah, it really is. Well, he prays with a rosary. I don't care. How many Christians don't believe in rosaries, but they don't pray either? Yeah, and the people that complain <laughs> about it are the ones that don't even pray. Exactly. The, like you said Because if you pray, you won't be able to complain very much because in your prayer time, God's going to say, um, how about kinda, you you kind of got some loose lips there. How about you focus on me? <laughs> you know, that's like the what you, what you just said. Well, go the people that usually complain about prosperity, are the ones that don't even give or anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we we need to look in the mirror a lot. Yeah, yeah. Lot, most of my encounters with people that argued about prosperity, I just turn to them and say, "Do you tithe?" Right. It's like a demon transforming, you know? It's like, okay, well, then you really don't have an opinion. I love when they say, it only mentions tithing in the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you know what? I have an answer for them. It's a, it's a great answer. You want, it? you want me to share it on the air? Do it. I said, you're right. In the Old Testament, the starting point was a tenth, 10%. Ten yeah. I said, Jesus said we have to give everything. Yeah. So Jesus has a right to say, oh, he did say it to somebody in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Do you want to come follow me? You only like one thing. Sell everything. Sell everything, everything. you have. And he was very rich. Sell everything you have. Give to the poor and come home. And Jesus say, has the right. And what did it say? He turned away and he was sorely sad. Yeah, and Jesus still loved him. Because in one, one of the Gospels said that Jesus loved him. Yep. So Jesus has a right to say, I want you to lay down your life. Right. Literally, I want you to lay down because your life. Because he paid for ours. Exactly. 
So he can ask us even things we don't think he has a right to ask us. Mm-hmm. If we believe. And that scares me. Oh, I mean, I'm not scared of... I know Jesus loves me. Right. But that scares me because my response is really important to that. And he really does have a right to ask us that. Well, I remember the first time I'd, I'd never been out of the country. I mean, yeah, I was born in Puerto Rico, but I don't remember it. But I still remember, you know, I was happy being the preacher. I was happy because I wasn't a pastor at the time. Yeah. I was traveling around going place to place. But then all of a sudden the Lord said, yeah, you're going on a mission field. I'm like, what? Hi, Lord, I'm living the good life. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. <laughs> and, you know, I, I love, well, that's a problem. You know, you need yeah. to step out it's of that It's not about you. You have to follow me. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And it was terrifying. Yeah. yeah. You know, but. But you know what? We would do it again. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know people just thought I was nuts. Going to the former Soviet Union, it was, it had just started coming apart. Right. You're taking your wife and your two little kids over right. there. What are you doing? You're nuts. Right. Well, what could I do? Well, you know, there's probably some people that would say, what I did after church Wednesday night. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. Why are you doing that? Yeah, that's not even real. Yeah. Why are you doing <laughs> that? And I was so thankful, though, because when the, the young gentleman brought it up for a prayer request, and he had already told me, he says, can I share with the church? I said, sure. Yeah. Right ahead. And uh, I, what I loved is not one person went, out of your yeah. mind. Yeah. Everyone was like, we need to pray. But you know, probably made it easier. That was your Wednesday night group, wasn't it? Yeah, core. Yeah. Core. Yeah. Sometimes you can't bring it up to the general core right. group because there's some that are like, what? Yeah. You know, there's those that come and punch their time card. And yeah. When yeah. they're finished, they punch out. Yeah. But. We've but, got to change. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's and, what it's all about. And I'll tell you what, I, I will admit, if the first part of my ministry, someone asked me to do that, I'd be trembling. Yeah. Uh, I've had some tremors come up my legs. So, uh, see, that's Pentecostals. We can cover that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You guys have you guys have a little bit harder time. Yeah. Well, especially at my size. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. Maybe I just need to think about when that first bite of fried chicken hit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had fried chicken in a long time. Oh, but I'm so proud of you, bro. Oh, well, I finally passed the hundred pound mark. Yeah, you're, so. you're doing well. Just keep going. But that's all right. Yeah. Don't backslide. No. Well, I don't even have a desire. That's what's funny. That's awesome. I don't have a desire for... Well, we joke around because my wife looked at me the other night. She said, oh, I want ice cream. Yeah, but... We are legion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's many flavors. <laughs> and then she tried to play it off. She said... Of course, she said our boy's name. She said, he wants ice cream. Yeah. I said, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Stop that. And I quit speaking through him. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> But um, I I just don't have a desire. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, even if we do eat something bad, oh well, it's one time. Yeah. It's not living in it like we used to. Yeah, you don't have, yeah, it's not your identity. Your taste change. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So, but that's all right. Amen. So, we are an hour and 50. <laughs> I think so, we, we covered everything. I, we? We, we got every question. Well, praise the Lord. And uh, I Wednesday night, I think I mentioned this to you yesterday when we recorded as well, but I had like five or six people. When y'all doing that live thing? When y'all doing that live thing? I was looking at my calendar today. Yeah. yeah so I think we're going to try to squeeze it in when you get back right. before I leave. And you're leaving in August, right? I'm leaving. The f- I have to go to Pittsburgh on the 5th. Okay. So we've got, we've got a little bit of time in there. So what, about two weeks we're going to try to fit it in there maybe? Yeah. We'll do it. I'll work on some stuff while you're gone. Yeah. And then, because, uh, I mean, there's not, not a lot of preparation we have to no. do. No. We just have to get people the opportunity to come. Right. And uh, we've had, I've had a few people say they'd like to come. I'm like, great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and I know we're doing, we'll do it at our church, and um, we'll have, you know, I'm, I'm talking to my wife. We'll probably have some stuff. We well, have your coffee. Church, and, your church is better set up for it anyway. Yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt about that. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, and that that offers open if if you need it. Oh yeah, yeah. For the we'll 19th, to keep that in mind. The 19th, yeah. And no the, pressure. But, right. Yeah. I know how you Pentecostals are. I want the glory. No. no. <laughs> that's like I said. That's the one thing the most that I love working with you and Benny, especially. We don't care. Yeah. Because the focus is on the Lord. Yeah, it's just you know whatever works. Yeah. I mean, I'll come. I'm coming no matter what. So right. It's not a big deal. You know. 
if you have it up at our place, I might end up having to clean up, and Uh-oh. I'd rather not. But no, <laughs> no well, in that case, I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, but uh, we're so thankful for you once again, watching, listening. Yes, and uh, it's been a blessing. It has been. So, and I, I had to kind of laugh the other day because I remember I made the statement to you. I said, I don't know how people do podcasts every day. Yeah. And then you look at me and say, Well, the Lord burdens yeah, us. We could probably do. <laughs> But it's it to to me this is not work. No, it's not. No. It's, and it's, actually, I came a little bit tired today. Because, I wonder why. <laughs> because I was, you know, I ran and then I had to hurry up and take my grandkids putt putt golfing. Then they, the sun came out and it got really hot and it's like, man, I need a nap or something. This here. guy, so, what did you say? You ran six miles today? Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you so, should have seen who was chasing me though. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that'd be the case for me. But but you know it's yeah you know, I could do it I mean I enjoy it and but you know if the Lord we'll see He hasn't yet I'll be honest I mean it's been six months yeah this has been pretty awesome yeah so and we never run out of stuff to talk about no of course the world kind of provides a lot of stuff to talk about and we don't even talk about it nearly as much as we probably we, should but or want to yeah. <laughs> We've already lost one episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, but that's okay. Anyways, we we'll, just want to. We can re rewatch that in the kingdom. That's right. <laughs> the funny thing was, in my truck, it automatically connects to my phone. You know, and I can listen to my phone, whatever. I can listen to YouTube, or whatever. And then I didn't even notice about it come up on the screen. My wife said, "Why is your podcast up on your screen?" Because I do not. I hate hearing myself. Yeah. I do. And I was like, well, I don't know. And I looked at it, and it was actually the episode it was deleted. Really? And I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> I was like, that's pretty cool, but it was actually the episode it was deleted. Wow. So, huh. that's all right. Yeah, I have a hard time listening to myself, too. I, I have a friend that used to ask me, because he's, he's a minister, too. He said, do you ever listen to yourself? And I said, nah, I just... Yeah, I hate it. I mean, I, I, I'll check sound and stuff, like mm -hmm. on our services. But I'm like, and sometimes my wife will say, you need to listen to what you said to see if that's how you meant it to come right. out. You know, because she kind of critiques me. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to do that. But uh, but I have, I've listened to portions of the, the, the podcast. Right. But yeah, it's like, it feels too weird. It is. <laughs> it is. It's like, it's like looking in a mirror or something like that. I I look in the mirror, but I, it's real quick. You just comb your hair. Yeah, you know that's why I got the hairstyle I do. So, yeah. You know, so Make it so it doesn't take me a long time. But so once again, we're just thankful for each other one of you. Um, we gotta smash that button. Smash the button. Share the episodes. Yeah. Tell people, not because we think we're great, but you know what? I think some of the stuff that we cover might help people. Well, there's even a lady. Like I said, I don't even recognize the name. But she commented on one of our, our videos, mm -hmm. and she said, just watching it, and this guy, I, I didn't ask her to do this, she said, just watching it is not good enough. She said, we need to get these guys, like them, subscribe to them, because it gets it in the algorithm so we can get it out. I was yeah. like, well, that's kind of cool, lady. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Appreciate that. Amen. So do that. Share yeah. it. Get it in, you know, help us out. Yeah, because uh, we're just here to invite you in our conversations. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you guys have become... Well, I mean, we see questions every week. Yeah. So it's a yeah. blessing. And the questions, you know what? Every question is a good question. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to ask a question. Yeah, don't be afraid. Even if it means T-T-U-N. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not a sports broadcasting podcast. No, we're not. Podcast, but we do. We kind of like sports a little bit. Yeah. But we love Jesus more. Amen. So that's important. It always comes back to him. So once again, we just appreciate you watching, listening on all platforms. Uh, remember, do all those things. Like it, subscribe, yeah. smash. And uh, I think we'll end up in, uh, in prayer once again. Yep, yeah. and be blessed. And the next time we come back, Ed will have some stories for us. I hope so. From Belize. Yeah. I know you will. I'm looking forward to it. Amen, me so too. So it's going to be a blessing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing I haven't seen these folks in four years. Amen. So I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing our family here. Transformation in the yeah. family here. Yeah. And everybody that goes. Absolutely. we got to pray those cows come home. At hope? Definitely. So, so, yes. So that the situation's freed up. Right. Amen. 
and uh, we're already seeing miraculous. And you can and translate that literally. literally. Right. Amen. And tomorrow, tomorrow Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tomorrow, the bus is going to Pittsburgh on its way to Belize. That is awesome. That is awesome. Amen. So we're thankful for it. Pray for the bus driver. Yes. So he gets everything down there yep. safely. From Pittsburgh to Belize. I don't even know how many miles that is. I don't know. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But, so uh, bless, his, bless him, Lord. They're expecting, uh, they want to be in Belize by Wednesday. Amen. Bless him. Bless that van. Yeah. Get that new motor broken in so it runs real well for the people down there. Yeah. And it's going to be kind of cool because it'll probably actually be the one taking us back to the airport to fly, yeah. fly home. Get a good picture. Be cool. Get a good picture. We was hoping to get a picture of the team here and then a picture of the team down there, but it didn't happen. But we'll but get, get a, a picture. Get a good picture of that bus taking you back to the airport. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's going to be cool. So Amen. let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Then. All right. Father in heaven, we once again thank you for the pleasure and uh, thank you for the opportunity once again just to uh, open your word and uh, answer some of these questions and share some experiences. And uh, Lord, as we, we go through the questions that we had today, we're thankful for each and every one who listens and watches and submits questions and uh, just uh, come and join our conversation. So, Lord, we just pray something was said or done here today uh, that would draw someone closer to you and, and maybe possibly ultimately to uh, reach out to you to, uh, to save them. And that's our whole key of even being here. So, uh, Lord, we just ask a blessing upon each and every one of those listening uh, and watching and Pastor Mike as well. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you bless uh, our trip to Belize and uh, Mike's upcoming trip to Latvia. We just want to see the glorification of our Lord and Savior in everywhere we go. And uh, we, we hope and pray and see things happen, and we know we're going to see things happen. So, Lord, we ask you and we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the empty tomb. And we thank you for the blessings in our life. And once again, we just give you all the power and praise and glory for it's in your name we pray. And amen. Amen and amen. And uh, once again, we'll see you next time. Yes. Walking in the truth. I got it. Okay. I got it. Okay.